Hey you guys, it's me. I'm back at, with some tips on how to eat healthy for 2009. I know for um, some people it can be kind of confusing depending on what source you're checking, what uh, site you're on, um, portion sizes aren't always very clear, what is a healthy food or vegetable or whatever. It's not always the clearest thing. So I'm here to clear up some of the questions that have been posed for me. Um, number one, uh, portion sizes. Um, a lot of times people um, get confused by this because if you go on some of the websites, uh, like one, our, our, the, our national government's website, it tells you that you should be eating protein. The size is about the size of a deck of cards or a mouse. Like not, a, like, not a rat mouse, but a computer mouse. Um, and I don't know about y'all, but when I'm cooking, I don't have my mouse with me. I don't have a deck of cards with me. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, also, they talk about the, the wheats or different types of grains. It's also about the size of a, a golf ball, I think. Half of a tennis ball. Crazy stuff like that. Stuff that just does not make sense to me. I don't play tennis, I don't play basketball, I don't play sports, so I don't know what one of them things, I mean, I know what they look like, but I don't have that so ingrained in my head what their size is. It's just difficult for me. I am on the computer all the time, but my mouse is kind of small. So, I have made this for you guys. I don't think you can see what these things say, or maybe you can if I hold it right. I don't know, can you see that? Maybe. Okay, so this yellow thing right here, that is the size of protein you should be having. A general rule of thumb for the amount of protein that you get, be it animal protein or, or non-animal protein, about the size of your fist. See? Hang on, let me make sure that's somewhere. Okay, see? That's my fist, and my fist basically is the size or amount of protein that I need per day. Not serving but per day, not every time I sit down and eat, I need to eat this amount, but per day, about this much, about this much. And the funny thing is, is that a lot of us, uh, especially in the West, our idea of protein is meat, and, and that's your source of protein. But grains have protein in it, fruits and vegetables have proteins. Um, basically, they're just amino acids, uh, the building blocks of cells. Excuse me, y'all, I gotta get my dress, get it all fixed it up. Okay. So that is the size of, of protein that you should, amount of protein that you should be getting. Um, this other part, this orange part right here, this right here is your sizing for whole grains. That's things like wheat. Um, who just sits down and eats wheat? Oh, excuse me, rice, um, uh, quinoa, excuse me, different kind of pastas, whole wheat pastas and things like that. A lot of you probably are getting a lot more pasta than this little serving size right here. And if that's all you're having that night, all right, eat your pasta, have a great time, but don't eat like that all the time because they are, uh, uh, if they're not whole grain, they're not complex carbohydrates and uh, simple carbs break down into sugar, like nobody's business. And then sugar putzes around with your blood sugar level, which gets sends you on a roller coaster ride. And you really want your blood sugar level to rise slowly and to fall slowly. You don't want this because it, you know, totally messes with your mood and it makes it harder for you to uh, lose weight if you don't have stable blood sugar level. This last part right here, this is the amount of fruits and vegetables that you should be getting. When you have your plate, you should have an abundance of vegetables. And if you're having any fruit, an abundance of fruit. This is the one thing that I will tell you that you can never get too much of. Because these are not full of empty calories. If you're cooking them properly, which your um, vegetables should be crunchy, slightly crunchy, or a little bit more crunchy depending on how you like it, when, when you eat them. Because if you cook them too long, you cook out all the nutrients and the fiber's all broken down. So um, they shouldn't be cooked for very long. Most vegetables should only be cooked for about five to ten minutes. Probably eight minutes like for broccoli and things like that. But more delicate things like your um, spinach, you probably gonna cook that for about five minutes or so, six or something like that at the most. Um, I can hear my phone ring and uh, that's okay, I'll go get it in a second. Anywho, um, 
that's what your plate should look like. This one right here is going to be your uh, whole grains, or excuse me, your protein. This is going to be your whole grains, and this is the fruit and vegetable section right in here. Um, eat a lot of those. If you don't think you had enough fruits and vegetables today, eat some more, and it will be 100% okay. Eat as much of those as you want. I highly, highly recommend that when you are doing your fruits and vegetables, if you can, make them organic. If you can make them 100% organic, then do so. If you can't do that, then do fresh. If you can't do fresh, then do frozen. Can should be the very last thing that you absolutely do. I understand that sometimes that's all you can afford. I grew up on canned fruits and vegetables. I was 21 years old. I'm 34 now. I was 21 years old before I realized that green beans don't taste like metal. All we ever had was green beans in the can. But I had food stamps when I was growing up, and we couldn't afford to even get the frozen kind. That cost a lot of money. But anyhow, I digress. Um, let's see. Um, if you cannot afford to eat 100% organic, because prices are crazy nowadays. Sometimes they're up, sometimes they're down. It just depends on gas. There are definitely certain fruits and vegetables that you want to get organic 100% of the time. That's going to be anything that you can eat the skin of. Uh, any kind of soft fruits, uh, like strawberries, like pears, like, or any kind of berry, first of all, any kind of berry, uh, nectarines, peaches, plums, those skins are kind of permeable. And so if they have been sprayed with pesticides like non-organic fruits are, you're going to be eating that too. Um, in your vegetable sources, anything that comes from out of the ground, carrots, uh, potatoes, uh, just rutabaga, yeah, rutabaga, if you eat that. Um, uh, what else? Daikon radish. Anything that you have to pull out of the ground, and that's the part that you eat, that's going to be soaking up most of the nutrients from the ground. Uh, uh, if there were any chemicals or pesticides sprayed on the ground, that's going to be soaking that up. So try to get those organic when at all possible. And my goodness, my goodness, I know this doesn't make any sense to... Um, or that, uh, not that it doesn't make any sense, but that uh, this one's going to sound odd, but cilantro. Cilantro, cilantro, cilantro. Oh, please get that organic. Cilantro, um, because it's such a cool plant, cleans out heavy metals. That's what it does. It cleans out heavy metals. A lot of times you'll find that in different detox formulas. You'll see cilantro in there. It's in there to get rid of those heavy metals. Now, if you are eating cilantro that's not organic, and it's been sprayed with any number of pesticides or it's been grown in a field that has toxins in it or whatever, that, that cilantro's done what it naturally does. And it's sucked up all those heavy metals and then you eat them. And then they get stored in your fat cells because your body don't know what to do with them. And nine times out of ten, when your body doesn't know what to do something, it sticks it in the fat cells. And it's just like, well, we'll figure this out later. So, once again, organic. Organic fresh fruits and vegetables. For people who do eat meat out there, you want to try and get things that um, are free range or cage free um, that weren't raised on a lot of hormones. Uh, if you can get any that are hormone free, that would be great. Nitrate free for the meat as well is wonderful, wonderful. Um, there's a great book. It's called Omnivore's Dilemma and it talks a lot about choosing organic versus local oh that's another thing too if organics aren't available to you but you have a farmer's market by god go go to the farmer's market go 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 get to know those farmers talk to them about what they use on their crops a lot of local farmers um know a lot of natural things to do that are, are organic sometimes they don't do organic things but because if they're doing a lot of local farming and trading in the area, they don't have to use as much pesticides because their stuff isn't being grown in California and then shipped to New York. You know, it's grown in California and it's shipped to El Segundo or whatever. You know, it's within a hundred mile radius kind of a thing. All right. Okay. Next video will be coming up. We'll be talking about detoxes and vitamins to take. And just remember your plate. Remember your plate, fruits and vegetables, protein, animal sources or non-animal sources, whole grain, eat a variety of foods, make it look like the rainbow. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day and eat healthy, okay? See you next time. Bye.